Hello guys, in this video I will show you how to do a bouncing ball in Windows Forms using C Sharp. So, hope you like this video and let's code. Hello again, the first thing I will do is create our Windows Form project. So, I go here to this folder Windows Win Forms that I already have and right click add new project. Next I will choose Visual C Sharp Windows Classic Desktop and under this template I will choose Windows Forms application. I give it a name that in this case is Bouncing Ball and it already has a location. I choose OK and Visual Studio creates this project for me. Next I increase the size of this window because we will have a big ball. OK. I go here to this file form1.cs that is actually this one and I right click on it and choose view code. This is like a code behind of this form.cs. In the form1.cs I will declare some variables that we will need. The first two variables will be private int ball width that is equals to 300 pixels. The next one is private int ball height that will be also 300 pixels. Next I will create another two variables for the position of the ball. I will have a private int ball pause x for the x coordinate and the value will be 0. The second one is private int ball pause y for the y coordinate. In English this means that our ball will be located at the top left corner of our window. Okay. Next I will declare another two variables to increment the position of each coordinate. Okay, I declare a private int move step for x and it will be 4 pixels and private int move step for y that will be 4 pixels too. So the next step is drawing our circle. Okay. And we will take advantage of an event that occurs in this form. If I go here to the form design and I right click on it, I can go to the properties and in the tab of events I can choose appearance paint. Inside of this box I will say paint circle and hit enter. Visual Studio will magically create this new method. Okay, private void paint circle that receives an object that is the sender and the paint event args that is E. This is located in our form one class. For you to know the magic behind of this, if we go to the solution explorer and choose the form1.designer.cs this is code that is auto generated by Visual Studio okay and you should never put your code inside of this file why because every time you change this guy this guy will change too and Visual Studio can erase your code Okay, so again moving down, we have a region that is called Windows Forms Designer Generated Code. And if we expand this, we have a declaration for this method, initialize component. And if we go to the form1.cs, we see a call for this method in the constructor of form1. Also, the paint event is assigned a paint event handler 
that is actually our new method okay so every time this event the paint event is triggered our new method the paint circle will be called so now let's fill this method the first thing to do is call the graphics and clear the form for us so it can have already a circle for example we want to clear it and change to back color so this means that if we have a circle on our window it will be erased and the next step is drawing a circle and to do that we call e graphics and fill ellipse because a circle is actually an ellipse we say that it is red and it is located at ball position x and ball position y also have a ball width and a ball height let's see the result now we have a window with a red circle let's add a border to this circle to draw a circle we call fill ellipse to draw a border we call draw ellipse the method is very similar like the first one but instead of brushes we have pens and for this case i will choose black the next step is filling this with these values a position and the width and height of our circle let's see and now we have a border and very tiny okay also we have an imperfect circle we can see pixels here okay let's put this a little more smooth to do that before of everything we say that e graphics smoothing mode should be smoothing mode anti alias let me put this in the next line so you can see all the code okay let's see and now we have a more perfect circle okay a smooth line now that we draw a circle it's time for us to move the circle to do that we need first update this position position for x coordinate and position for y and then we must clear the old circle and draw the new one to clear the circle and draw the new one you we already have this paint circle because it will clear the old circle and draw another circle with the new positions now we just have to update from time to time our ball position x and our ball position y to do that we go here to the form 1.cs design and we choose toolbox and search for timer drag and drop the timer and the timer is an object that will execute some action from time to time okay if we go to the properties of this object the timer here and you have properties and events too the event tick should be associated with a method called move ball if I hit enter again it's created another method inside our form 1.cs the first thing we have to do is update coordinates and the second one is update the painting okay to update our coordinates it's very simple we just say ball pause x and increment it with our move step x for the y coordinate we say the same thing ball pause y increment with move step y our ball can go outside of the borders so to prevent that we must add some checks if the ball position x is less than zero or ball position x plus ball width is bigger than 
this client size width. You can read this line like if ball position x plus its width is bigger than the window's width, the ball is outside of our window. And then we must reverse the move step x to minus move step x. So if move step x is 4, it will be minus 4. If is minus 4, it will go back to 4. For the y position, we do the same thing. Just me copy, let me paste. And if y is less than 0 and y plus ball height is bigger than client size in the window, height, then we should reverse the move step y, okay? Just to make it clear, sometimes our ball can go out of the window, and for this example is perfectly okay. For simplicity, I prefer to have just this code, but if you want that the ball never goes out, you must perform some Matt here, okay? Update. Our painting is just firing this method, the paint circle, okay? To do that, we just say that this dot refresh. So, this will refresh our window, okay? This will trigger the paint event that we'll call this method and will clear the old circle and create another circle now with our new ball position x and ball position y. So let's see the result. And nothing happens. Our circle doesn't move. Why? Because if we go here to the timer again and go to the properties of the timer and check here we have these two properties that are very important we have uh, enabled to false so the timer is not working and an interval of 100 milliseconds so we must say that enabled is true and I will set this to 10 milliseconds for our ball to be more fast. Let's save and again if we go here to the form1.designer.cs here in the timer1 these two lines of code were added. And now we have this ball but the ball is moving but is flickering. Okay? So let's do something for that. We go here to the form1.cs again and we go up to the constructor form1 and we must set some styles to this form. So set style and the first thing that we have to do is control styles optimize double buffer what this does if this is true the control is first draw to a buffer rather than directly to the screen which can reduce flicker and we have a next phrase if you set this property to true you should also set the control styles all painting in wm paint to true so we will put that flag to control styles all painting in WM paint and this one says if true the control ignores the window message WM underscore erase background to reduce flicker it's what we want this style should only be applied if the control styles user paint bit is set to true so again we must add a third flag control styles user paint and this one this last one just says that if true the control paints itself rather than the operating system doing so so our control will be repaint 
itself not the operating system okay and we want to set this to true the second thing that we must do here is call these update styles let's see and now we have this ball bouncing as you can see this is it thank you for watching and hope you like it